Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Taurus for November 2013. So if Taurus is your sun sign or Taurus is your rising sign, then this is for you. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, and check out info about my life coaching. The end of a year is a fantastic time to get direction for the new year to make it your best ever, and that's my department is trying to make things the best ever. So um, check that out, and while you're there, sign up for my free newsletter and get a free gift. So what's up for Taurus for November? Very excited about what I see as far as potentials. And of course, as I say that, we always have to remember that potentials don't necessarily translate into manifestations or actualizations. Um, we probably know many people that have potentials all around them at any given time. And we may have frustration saying, gosh, you have so much potential. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? And that is how I look at astrology and how I experience astrology is that I see all of these potentials around an individual, around the sign, around, a, you know, a certain um, horoscope, monthly horoscope for, you know, a rising or a sun sign. And my question then back to you is, what are you going to do with that? And what you're going to do with that is partly based on factors that are different than the current time. We are all affected by things that happened in our childhood, and we are all limited by things that have happened in our past that make us sometimes not as receptive to current transits. This is why I don't do just transit readings, because I've come to see that unless we resolve certain core issues, the way that we are receptive or magnetic to actualizing potentials that are around us is going to be dramatically affected. So these are the types of things that I go into in my sessions, um, what you can do to shift that energy and make the most of the current planetary transits. But in any case, regardless of what you've got going on in that area, I'm going to go into all of these potentials that I see for November. Major potential for new relationship. And this can be a new client relationship. This can be any relationship of consequence. Um, and this can also be a new aspect of a current relationship. So perhaps you're in a long-term romantic relationship, but you have this tremendous energy, multiple placements around new energy coming in into an old relationship or and reviving it or bringing a different aspect of it um, or just an entirely new relationship. Um, there are multiple factors in your chart that make me, if you are of childbearing age or child making age, then um, definitely be warned that if you're not trying to make a baby, you have a lot of energy around you for making one anyway. Jupiter is transiting through your fourth house, and this is for the next year pretty much. When that happens, it leaves many potentials for your family to be expanded. Now, there's many other ways besides having a child, birthing a child, creating a child to expand your family, but this is one major way that this could happen. A pet could come in or, you know, another family member could come live with you. You could have some other roommate. You could move to a bigger house. There are different ways this can manifest, but when you, when you combine the factor of Jupiter in the fourth house with the factor of Mars in the fifth house, which rules children, which makes you more fertile, right now, and you have been through October and um, will be through part of November and actually September also, you were. Um, so you combine the energy of new aspect of relationship with expanding family and fertility, then a very, you know, um, obvious go-to is you might be making babies. So I just want to give you a heads up about that. And if you have gotten the news now about this, then congratulations. Um, so I hope that you are as excited as I am <laughs> for you about that. Um, whenever there are multiple placements in a house, as you have now in your seventh house, there are multiple potentials in that house. So for every planet that you have transiting in the seventh house, you have all of these range of potentials. So you've got the solar eclipse happening there, which is November 3rd, you could have started to receive news about that before November, or it could come in in November. New openings, new portals, new possibilities. You've got the sun transiting through there. Saturn is still moving through there. That's a longer-term transit. Mercury is moving through there, and Mercury is going to be going retrograde 
Well, as of October 21st, it will be retrograde and will be retrograde until November 10th. So that is a tremendous amount of energy focusing on relationships. So asking relationship questions. Um, are you in the right relationship? How can you improve your relationship? What can you do to have a relationship if you don't have one? Um, and like I said, this is not just romantic, but that does seem to be a big focus for people. So they're, I want to speak to that. But this can also be if you're self-employed. This can be around getting clients, you know, new clients, new accounts. And this new solar eclipse energy coming in could mean a new account. And it could be something creative. And that can be how this fifth house comes in. And perhaps you move to a bigger place or, or an area that feels expanded to you to help your work. And this Mars in the fifth house can rule a creative effort rather than a child um, because a child is a creation, but there are other types of creations that are not related to, you know, creating a human. So there's so many different ways that this can look. In the meantime, you've got Venus transiting through your ninth house, which can give, bring money to you from interacting with people from different countries or in different countries. So if you, um, I'm thinking of one Taurus friend in particular, if you've been thinking about taking your local business to a more um, national or, or global level, selling your products and or services, then you have extra energy around supporting that effort for you. With Venus, which can bring money in your sector of the wide open spaces of different cultures, languages, and countries, coupled with this new relationship, new client energy, and high, high creativity, um, all of those are potentials. So as usual, I can't see what's going on in your personal chart. I would like very much to. The end of the year is a fantastic time to get yourself the information, the clarity, the insights, the resources to make the upcoming year your best ever. If you want to make changes in your life, if you want to make improvements in your life, definitely contact me because that is my department. So check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, or click on the link below this video, and go to my personal coaching page. You can see many, many, many testimonials for people, from people who have had um, sessions with me. And you can read about that. If you're interested in learning astrology and you resonate with how I present it, you can um, pick up my obscenely low-priced, um, self-directed um, foundational astrology series and sign up for my free newsletter. So I hope you do all these things. I hope you have a fabulous November. And um, if you have not listened to the, no, the October horoscope for... Taurus, then definitely listen to that. I wish I would have mentioned that earlier now. I just remembered it. But there are aspects that I talked about in that horoscope that are going to be current for November that I didn't go into in this video. So listening to the November and the October videos will give you more of a complete picture of the energetic profile of the month. So definitely check that out and take good care.